We'll talk now this morning about the novel The Eye. That is the latest and greatest book written by my next guest this morning. To give you a little background on him, he actually used to practice law for 20 years in the Boston area, but he decided to follow his passion and pursue a career in creative writing. Rusty, it is a pleasure to have you back on the show with me today. Thank Always you. a pleasure for me, Jenna, and thank you for having me. Rusty, before you talk with us about the eye this morning, mm -hmm. I want to talk a little bit about your story. Mm -hmm. I love how you followed your passion, Rusty. You moved here to pursue creative writing. Mm -hmm. That's correct. What made you finally take that plunge and do it? Well, to be honest with you, uh, I was getting very tired of the practice of law. The practice changed dramatically just in the 25 years I was doing it. Went from, I think, a, 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 a profession uh, to basically a used car dealership. And, uh, and I did get divorced, and so my kids are grown up. And it was just the time to make that break, and I took advantage of it. And I'd researched it. I'd been down here a bunch of times, and uh, this was really something I just wanted to do. And this was about four years ago, so Rusty, are you happy with that decision today? Oh, I absolutely mm -hmm. have never regretted a second, and I love Key West, I love the whole of the Keys and everything about it, and uh, this is going to be my home for, as far as I know, the rest of my life. Well, you've gotten so much inspiration down here too, mm -hmm. Rusty. This is your fourth book that yes. you have released. Mm -hmm. Now, the last time you were on the show, we talked about your previous three books, which were kind of psychopath killer books. Right, right. Psycho, thrillers, psycho, psycho thrillers. Psycho thrillers. I thrillers, shouldn't right, say psycho. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my first novel was called The Subway Killer and that is really the only one that was directly based on a case I actually handled when I was an attorney. Uh, I started off as a public defender for the first three or four years when I uh, passed the bar and uh, it's roughly based, very roughly based on a, a guy that I represented who was ultimately convicted of several serial killings but he was just a fascinating, charismatic character, a story I always wanted to tell and always wanted to write. Uh, so I actually wrote that one back uh, 2007, 2008, and then didn't get around to publishing it until 2010. Uh, the second one is called uh, Suicide. It's one I wrote down here. Um, it takes place in Key West. It's the only one of my books that takes place exclusively in Key West. The Eye, there's part of it that takes place in Key West. Um, and that's a really cool thriller, I think. Um, and then insanity, and I get these weird ideas. I hear, read things, I hear things, and all of a sudden I, I start saying, well, how could that have happened? And sanity is based roughly, again, on uh, real life happenings in a little town in California called Tracy, California. I call it Cary. And all these weird things started happening there. Um, weird, strange murders and crimes and so on that were totally out of, out of sync uh, with the uh, regular attitude and atmosphere of that place. And so I started thinking, how, how could something like that happen so I concocted a fictional uh, resolution to it? And uh, I think it makes a really good story. Now, Rusty, your fourth book, you've been quoted saying that this is the book that you are most proud of. Why? Well, I, I, first of all, I think, it, I think it takes a while to learn how to write well. I think you've got to go through some trial and error. You have to publish some books. I'm not saying the others I don't think are good. Of course, I love them. But uh, <laughs> uh, and it's gotten uh, you know, pretty good. Uh, uh, acceptance, but uh, it takes a while to learn how to write, and I think you can only learn how to write by writing. And so I finally think I got it now, and it's more what I've learned is not trying to get to the end and fool people or mystery, it's, it's the journey of getting there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this one, I think, uh, really develops a lot of the characters much better than they did in the past. Uh, even though it's a psycho thriller, as I call it, there are a couple of great love stories intertwined in it and uh, some real heroic actions by people. And uh, some, for some people, the storm brings out their best and others not their best. Um, but it's actually based on something that, that happened to me, um, I don't know, 10 years ago or so. Um, I used to come down regularly for the Miami Boat Show. That was kind of my way to just get off by myself and uh, had to leave early because a hurricane was coming. And so I flew back up to Boston and sure enough, came right up the coast and I remember lying on my couch and the hurricane's raging. It was only a, a category one, uh, but you know, wind 65, 70 miles an hour. And uh, I remember lying on my couch, just looking up at the sky, and then all of a sudden it cleared and blue skies, the weirdest blue color. And then I realized the eye was passing right over me. Mm -hmm. And then of course the backlash came and so on. And I started thinking, 
that thing following me? <laughs> and then I went from there. So this story is basically about a huge, uh, almost paranormal size hurricane um, that starts out in Burkina Faso. And I love doing the research for this one. This is mm -hmm. so much fun uh, in Af Burkina Faso in, in Africa. It's a Cape Verdean uh, hurricane, which are the strongest that, that uh, usually develop because of the distance travels over the, the warm ocean. And so it hits Cape Verde, had some fun with characters there, hurricane hunters, et cetera. And then it proceeded over and uh, there the a couple having their, taking their sailboat from Bermuda down and then it hits Florida and it hits mm -hmm. the Florida Keys and, and just had a lot of fun with it. But I also really started to develop this idea about uh, guilt feelings about certain things in our lives and, and paranoia that we develop around that and then we start thinking that maybe things out there are after us or mm -hmm. are trying to get us and and so of course as some of the characters in this uh, story think the hurricane is actually following them because mm -hmm. it does do some weird things mm -hmm. and um, so I just I think it's a good story and I think uh, I, one thing I might guarantee is that whether you like it or not uh, I don't think you're going to be able to put it down. I really don't. It just, I think it really propels the reader forward from chapter to chapter. Well, you definitely have a gift for mm -hmm. making sure that your reader doesn't put the book down, because all of your previous novels, too, that, mm -hmm. that has been the case. Rusty, what is your advice for any writers <coughs> out there who also want to follow their mm -hmm. passion? Um, I think, number one, you've got to sit down and write. I mean, you just you have to allocate uh, a certain time of day. I don't care what time of day that is. Uh, I prefer the early morning. You know, I usually start writing about seven or eight, and I will not get up from that computer chair until I've done at least 500 words. And usually, I can rip off 750 or 1,000 in one setting, uh, a couple of hours. Uh, Hemingway always said he would sit there and write until. Yeah, 750 words, seven pencils, because he wrote longhand and pencil, or lunch, whichever <laughs> came first. Well, I do, my, my <coughs> base limit is 500, and you just sit there, and you do not get up until you've written that. And I don't care if you repeat how now brown cow 500 times, <laughs> it doesn't matter. You just sit, and you gotta write, and uh, that discipline is absolutely essential. Mm -hmm. uh, and so pick that good time of the morning for you, or afternoon, whatever time you like, and do not get up until you've reached your goal and uh, don't worry about what it sounds like or looks like. Don't worry about editing. Just get it out there. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is you got to read a ton. Mm -hmm. When you write, don't stop reading other people's works. Um, I'm always, uh, by, I get uh, the reflections of other writers by reading their books and, and it just teaches me more about the process of writing. So those two are the main things, write and read. I love it. Those are mm -hmm. great advice, great pieces of advice, Rusty. Mm -hmm. And do you have yourself a favorite author that you always read and kind of who oh, pushes you? Oh boy, um, <clears throat> I start off with Hemingway. Mm -hmm. um, my dad was an absolute Hemingway aficionado, um, and that was a creative writing and English major in college. So I really studied Hemingway. So I, I guess it, core wise, he was probably my greatest influence. But I love Dan Brown, a more contemporary novelist, um, that sort of thing. Um, so I would say Hemingway is probably the root of it. Mm -hmm. In fact, that's I like, uh, recently got a job as a tour guide at the Hemingway House. So I, the greatest job I've ever had in my entire life, and I just love it. I go into work every day. Uh, only work part time, but uh, mm -hmm. I go into work every day, just loving it and uh, and knowing I'm just really going to enjoy myself. Well, wonderful. Well, Rusty, before we go this morning, why don't you tell us what you're working on right now? Okay, um, I haven't quite picked the name for it. I wanted to call it the Ghost Rider, but uh, that's been taken in some other areas. So I think I'm going to call it the Phantom Rider. And basically, it's about a, a writer who's in his late 50s, early 60s, go figure, right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he was an extremely successful author, mystery uh, author, and he's kind of fallen on hard times. The spontaneity, the spark has kind of fallen to the wayside, so his sales have really declined, and finally, his his editor and his publisher decide, we're going to get you a, a ghostwriter, and phantom writer is kind of a, another term for ghostwriter. And it turns out to be a very attractive young lady who is just a superlative writer. And it goes from there, um, all kinds of really weird little <laughs> loops and turns and twists and everything. So I'm really excited about it. Well, great. I look forward to reading it and okay. having you back on the show to talk further about it. Rusty, it's I been a pleasure it. having you this morning. Jenna, thank, thank you. you so much as usual, and uh, I really appreciate this offer. That will do it for me this morning. Thank you for tuning in. I'll be right back here tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. and 8.30 a.m. Take care, everyone. Goodbye.